Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, today we're going to be reacting to the best bit of Jordan Peterson versus Matt Delahuti. Guys, pardon me if I didn't get me correctly. Guys, let's get straight into this. Looks like Jordan Peterson is back on his bullshit about how he thinks atheists unwittingly believe in a god. Are there, are there no godless artists and poets? Well, there are artists and poets who think they're godless. Is there anyone that Peterson believes really is godless? If not, I don't know how he can test his hypothesis that people who believe in a god behave one way and people who don't behave in another. Okay, so I'm telling you I don't believe there's a god, and yeah. your, your response to that is, I really do because I have a moral sense, but my moral sense is utterly without any appeal to a god. Explicitly. Or implicitly. Uh, maybe. The f That's not so obvious. Okay, it's really easy. Because it's you, regard, easy. you regard Sam Harris as an implicitly valuable entity, because otherwise you'd just throw him off the stage. And then the question is, well, just exactly why is he an implicitly valuable entity? As best I can tell, nothing has value unless someone values it. Values seem to come from people's attractions and aversions, which are behaviors that don't, in any way that I can discern, require a belief in a god. Worms have attractions and aversions, and they act on them. Do worms believe in a god? Oh, I think okay. you can have a per perfectly acceptable foundation for secular morality, even if it fundamentally centers around selfishness. I'd rather not be thrown off the stage. It's in my best interest to encourage that sort of understanding in others, and therefore I will not throw him off the stage. I would rather not have my stuff stolen, and it's in my best interest to encourage others not to do that, so I will not steal stuff, and I will work with others to ensure that the people who steal stuff are punished. It is in, in, a, in a virtually pragmatic uh, why moral do you, system. Why do you think it's not in your best interest to have stuff stolen from you or to be thrown off the stage? I think best interest is too abstract a term to use when making this point. The simple fact of the matter is Matt acts to deter theft in general because he is simply averse to having his stuff stolen. He doesn't like it. Do you need to believe in a god to like or dislike something? Do you need to believe in a god to pursue the things you like and avoid the things you dislike? Why do you think you're valuable and worth preserving? Because I am the descendants of people who thought they were valuable and worth, dis worth preserving, and the ones who didn't think that have killed themselves. But this is not a statement about... <laughs> That's a perfectly reasonable explanation, but Peterson just laughs instead of rebutting it. Maybe he's looking for a justification rather than an explanation. People often get explanations and I justifications mixed up, so maybe up. Matt and Jordan are talking past each other here. Jordan Peterson seems to think that hallucinogens have spooky magic powers. I, I would never construe it as a scientific issue because science can't confirm the supernatural. I mean, we are blocked until somebody demonstrates a mechanism by which we can explore uh, and confirm the existence of the supernatural and then confirm that it actually can impact the natural world. We're stuck, which is why science relies on methodological naturalism. You seem to be able to do it with psychedelic drugs. You seem to be able to do what with psychedelic drugs? Well, everybody that takes them in, in under, under reliable settings generally comes back and and claims the presence of a mystical experience. Okay, first of all, I guess I haven't been taking them under reliable settings because nothing I've ever experienced on psilocybin or LSD has been even the slightest bit mystical. Secondly, after Matt said that science can't confirm the supernatural or confirm that it impacts the natural world, Peterson says you seem to be able to do it with psychedelic drugs. Really? Does Peterson really think that psychedelic drugs allow science to confirm the supernatural? How does the fact that people report mystical or religious experiences confirm that those experiences are anything more than natural. Yeah, and that but... seems to be du duplicatable and replicable across cultures, in labs, with multiple different substances, the chemical constituents of which are known very well. It's like it's part of this religious phenomenology, and to me that's just a set of facts. But the question is whether we can confirm that religious phenomenology is anything more than natural. The fact that people have experiences on drugs that they refer to as mystical does not confirm this. As someone who's been high as a kite. <laughs> I, I fully agree that people take drugs and report experiences that they describe as mystical or supernatural. Just like people record, report other experiences as if they were religious or ghosts or whatever. We have no way of confirming that this something mystical or supernatural actually can, happened. What this is, this is about the Stops language- Stops people from smoking. Well, you can stop smoking without any sort of supernatural intervention. No, not really. You can't stop smoking without supernatural? There aren't really any 
any reliable chemical means for inducing smoking cessation. Well, if you're using psychedelic drugs to stop smoking, even if it is to elicit a mystical experience that doesn't occur every time you take them, aren't you using a chemical means? You can use a drug called bupropion. I think that's the one. It's whatever Wellbutrin is. Um, is that supernatural? To no, you don't need a supernatural effect, but it doesn't work very well. But if you give people magic mushrooms, psilocybin, and they have a mystical experience, they have about an 85% chance of smoking cessation sure, with but, one treatment. But yeah, but that's kind of like evidence, you know. It, it's kind of like evidence. It's and evidence that you can take mushrooms mm -hmm. and increase your chance of quitting smoking. But no, it's, it's not. It's, it's indication that if you take mushrooms, and you have a mystical experience. But what reason do we have to believe that such an experience is supernatural? The fact that a drug has psychological effects that in turn have behavioral consequences is not evidence of the supernatural. What's the simpler explanation? That there is a particular kind of natural psychological experience, which people call mystical, that is unique in its efficacy at helping people stop smoking, or that magic somehow gets involved? Now there is an interesting question here, which is what is it about this particular kind of experience that is so effective at helping people stop smoking? smoking, but on what planet is it at all reasonable to infer that the answer is supernatural intervention? Guys, if I'm being honest, I didn't really like the cut. It's more like he's trying to like insult Peterson in a way or trying to like dispute everything he's saying without Peterson having the chance to cut, get back at him and I don't like it. I thought I downloaded a video where it just Peterson and the other guy talking, but like it's more like this guy is cutting him off, and like it's more like two people against one. I don't like it. Like I hate, I hate it each time it cuts. Like, each time I hate his points, I was like, what the fuck. To be honest, this wasn't fair, but I believe almost, I won't say all, but most great scientists actually believe in God and. If you feel they are stupid too, so let it be that. I don't feel it's by force for you to believe in God. If you don't, it's fine. That's you. That what you think is best for you is fine. Don't like no one's forcing you to believe in God. No one's forcing you to believe that there's a spiritual entity. No one's forcing you to believe that there are spiritual powers, like there are powers that are higher than science. If I will say. It's just you believing on what you want to believe and it's a choice. You are we are old enough to believe on what you want to believe. It's you. Like him, he does not believe in God. That's his business. It's no one's forcing anyone to believe in God. We just telling that oh, this is the part we believe and we think and the right part to follow and you don't want to. Then it's fine. One of the first books that was ever created was the Bible. So you saying the book that the first book that ever created the Bible and people dying to people dying to fight for a curse. You feel they were being stupid or they were mad or they were delusional. It still doesn't make sense. Like he said, he feels like people, his descendants, feel their life was worth keeping and those who don't die. Yeah, the same way religion and God has been passed on from generation to generation. So, I know your parents were atheists, there's a high possibility you be atheist. If your parents believe in God, there's a high possibility you believe in God. That is there, but if you look at it as a logical person, you know that science don't know everything. And most things I found out were already in the Bible like thousands of years ago, so it does not make sense for you not to believe in it. But, guys, that's for anyone who says they don't believe in God. Do you, fam? But guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.